Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Prime Ticket presents the Dodgers as they take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Saturday night to you, wherever you may be. Welcome to Game 2 of the series, Dodgers winning last night, which was a major accomplishment when you realize last year they played Milwaukee four times here at Dodger Stadium, and they lost all four. In fact, the only Dodger victory last year against Milwaukee that took place in Wisconsin. Two youngsters on the mound tonight. Willie Peralta will be on the mound for Milwaukee and Matt McGill for the Dodgers. And, yeah, I know you're saying, who? Matt McGill? I thought you said Stephen Fife. Well, Stephen Fife came up with bursitis. Matt McGill has been called up from Albuquerque, and he will be the ninth starting pitcher used by the Dodgers in 23 games. You have to go back to 1942 to dig up a year like that. We'll get to that, to the game, and a whole lot more coming up right after this. By AT&T U-verse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. And by Jack in the Box. The Chipotle Chicken Club combo is back for a limited time. Los Angeles Dodgers 
Hey, we are getting you seven moments away from first pitch here at Dodger Stadium. L.A. taking on the Milwaukee Brewers, a chance to go over 500 on the season. Beautiful night, of course, as usual, but in particular tonight, clear and cool, just under 70 degrees when we start the game. Alongside former big leaguer Steve Lyons, son Patrick O'Neill. Well, the injuries, you may have heard Vin talk about it or, or us during the pregame show. Stephen Fife who was a DL, retroactive to the 22nd. Bursitis, Matt McGill from Simi Valley will make his first career start. The ninth starting pitcher in the 23rd game of the year. That list is too long. You shouldn't go through nine starting pitchers in an entire season, yep. not in the month of April. Look at the long list of, of Dodgers that are hurt, not just on the pitching staff, but Hanley Ramirez will get back here pretty soon. Mark Ellis, we don't know how bad he is. And then, of course, Adrian Gonzalez missing tonight's game potentially because of an infection. But goodness gracious, you should not have to go through that many starting pitchers this early in the year. Dodgers aren't done yet. You know, there's a guy, former first-round pick, Zach Lee, tearing it up in double-A. If something else happens, may see him sooner rather than well, later. Well, good news, Capuano, maybe by early May, can return. He'll have a rehab start, and you have Hanley Ramirez playing tonight at Rancho, and hopefully he'll be available by the time the Dodgers go up to San Francisco. But with Adrian Gonzalez out of the lineup, he's been so good. It's the first game he's missed all year. He will hopefully be available by the end of this game. You just hope it's not too serious. Yeah, hopefully they can tape it up and give him some medication. He can still play with what little infection he has there. They just want to make sure it doesn't get worse. But when you look at what Don Mattingly had to do with his lineup today, it's basically like, look, let me throw some darts at a wall, pick out some names, we'll see what we're up. Yeah. Go get them. All right, you have A.J. Uh, Ellis catching, and uh, he'll be hitting second. And one thing Don said is a lot of positives there. Just speed is not one of them. Yeah, he handles the bat well. He goes yeah. the other way, does anything a number two hitter wants to do, except run. <laughs> All right, well, it uh, should be a great game. We'll be here, of course, for our Dodgers Live postgame show. When we come back, Vince Scully has the call here on Prime Ticket. Sit back, enjoy. Brewers and the Dodgers are next. to you wherever you may be game two of the three game series with the Brewers on the line as the Dodgers take the field under powder blue skies a beautiful late afternoon early evening for the Dodgers they are three and a half games behind Colorado a reminder too that the Rockies will be in here Monday Tuesday and Wednesday and for Milwaukee they're two and a half games behind the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's Ron Renicki's lineup. Norachika Aoki will be in right field. Carlos Gomez in center. And Ryan Braun will be in left. Iniski Betancourt will be at third base. Ricky Weeks at second. Martin Maldonado will be the catcher. Blake Lally at first base. Alex Gonzalez on the mound, the shortstop, and Peralta on the mound. On the mound for the Dodgers, and you can imagine fighting a few butterflies, is Matt McGill. He's from Simi Valley. The Dodgers drafted him in 2008 at a Royal High School in Simi Valley. He originally committed to go to Cal Poly, 
but opted eventually to sign with the Dodgers. Simi Valley, of course, he's uh, come from the same hometown as Jeff and Jared Weaver. So Matt is certainly big enough. He is 6'3", 190. His parents are here, and we'll see how he fares now against Aoki. Aoki, always a threat to bunt, takes very high, ball one. Aoki is fighting it. He has just six hits in his last 44 at-bats, though he's batting just 130. The next pitch to him that finds the mark, and the count, one ball and one strike. Below the Dodger lettering, you see the number 36 worn by Matt. And the next pitch missing, ball two. The first Dodger to wear number 36 was the immortal Casey Stengel back in 1936. And later on, Big Don Newcomb wore 36. The next pitch is low, so he's behind now, three and one. Just a couple of years ago, another player from Simi Valley wore 36. That was Jeff Weaver. 3-1 pitch. Aoki takes a strike, even though he starts to go to first base. 3-2 and two the count. Aoki is about 5'9", 180. Strikes out, oh, maybe 6% of the time. And the 3-2 pitch on the way is taken for ball four. So Aoki... Draws the leadoff walk, and that will bring up Carlos Gomez. The Dodgers with the leather. When you have Jerry Hairston at first, we'll explain. Skip Schumacher at second. Luis Cruz at short. Juan Uribe at third. And then the outfield, Crawford Campanithia. A.J. Ellis behind the plate. Let's start with Adrian Gonzalez. He's out of the lineup, and Jerry Hairston is playing first base. Gonzalez had a leg infection, a small infection, but it wasn't responding to treatment, so they sent him to the hospital to be checked. He can come back, and he would be then eligible to get into the game. Check swing for a strike on a foul ball, and they count 0-1. As far as Mark Ellis is concerned, and you remember, he strained his quad, the Dodgers feel it's not as serious as it might have been, and they would hope that Mark would be ready in a couple of days. Carlos Gomez waiting, and the strike one pitch on the way, and that's in the dirt. Nice save by A.J., and the, they'll put a new ball in play. So Aoki opens up with a walk. Matt McGill is the ninth Dodgers starting pitcher in 23 games. We mentioned briefly, you have to go back to 1942. The Dodgers had nine starters in 23 games and still had a great year, but not great enough. That club, when they played 154 games in a year, that Dodger team won 104 and came in second to the St. Louis Cardinals, who won 106. One ball and one strike. McGill ready. Matt comes over the top. Check swing. It's going to cost a strike. And the count one and two. One other thing I always remember about that 42 ball club as a kid growing up in New York. Larry McPhail was the owner of the Dodgers, the flashy redhead. And he held a clubhouse meeting with this team that was winning so many. And he got into a bitter argument. There goes the runner on a foul ball. So Aoki will go back to first. As I understand it, Larry McPhail got into an argument with Dixie Walker and several other members. And finally, in the heat of the moment, Larry McPhail said, and I'll tell you one other thing, you're not going to win. And the players scoffed at him. And they went on to win 104 and lost. Here's the one-two pitch coming up. McGill deals just off the corner. And they count two balls, two strikes. Doug Eddings is the plate umpire. Doug's certainly been around 15 years umpiring in the big leagues. Lives in New Mexico. Two and two the count. Throw over to first Aoki back on the bag. They did run Aoki briefly. He has stolen three and he's been caught twice. So McGill trying to settle in now. Long look into A.J. Now a high set up around the letters. And the pitch is swung on and missed. And down goes Gomez. 
So a walk followed by a strikeout, and we have one away, and Ryan Braun coming up. Fastball that seemed to rise as it was heading towards home plate. In talking about McGill, he has a fastball that's been clocked as high as 95. Good late breaking slider, fair curveball, and an effective change. So here is Ryan Braun. Uh, throw to first Aoki back on the bag. Ryan Braun hitting 269. He has seven home runs, 21 runs batted in, and he homered in the fourth inning last evening. So the local boy, Ryan Braun, checking another local boy, Matt McGill. Matt ready and delivers, and it's high, ball one, one and oh. Ryan Braun, of course, the MVP of last year. He was the rookie of the year in 2007. He's hit as many as 41 home runs last year. And he has driven in as many as 114. The 1 0 pitch on the way. McGill deals. Big fastball swung on and missed. That was 92, but the thing about it, it's rising. That thing just keeps getting up and up as it approaches the plate. So one ball and one strike to count. They talk about the two seamers sinking. Boy, his four seamer really rises. One ball and one strike. McGill ready, looks over at first at Aoki and then backs off the rubber. Dodgers had a big win last year because Milwaukee had beaten them nine out of 11 and four straight here. One ball and one strike. Next pitch is hit in the air down the right field line foul and out of play which reminds us to remind you you pitch Braun away and he can go that way. His home run last night went to right field. So Ryan Braun. 6'2, 205 pounder facing Matt McGill. One boy lives in Granada Hills and the other in Simi Valley. McGill, a high set and the 1 2 pitch on the way. Matt, very deliberate. Here he comes. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. Kemp through the shadows, reaches up and makes the catch. And getting back to first base is Aoki. So Matt Kemp making a nice play on a ball hit over his head to deep right center. And going from sunlight to shade, he reaches up to make it and winds up in the sunshine again. So two down in the first inning. And the battle will be Yaniski Bettencourt. So a good play by Kemp for the second out. Bettencourt is hitting cleanup for the first time this year. Hitting 277. Four home runs, 16 runs batted in. Out of a stretch goes McGill and his first pitch in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Betancourt deserves to hit cleanup when you realize he's averaging a run batted in every four at bats. He doesn't usually hang around the plate. He averages only three pitches in that bat. He's from Santa Clara in Cuba. 5'10, 190. Talks about escaping the island, a rather harrowing trip in a small boat with rough seas and sharks. Aoki at first may be a threat to go. Two down, first inning, no score. Betancourt, right hand batter, checking in. And the pitch to him that finds the mark and the count one ball and one strike. Benton Corder likes to be called Ricky was originally signed by the Mariners eight years ago came up with the Mariners shortly after being signed. The one one pitch on the way swung on squirted foul up along first base. Gary Hairston is there to flip it into the Milwaukee dugout. One and two the count to Yaniski Betancourt. As a youngster, Betancourt, growing up in Cuba, watched and idolized Ken Griffey. 
Yaniski has hit as many as 16 home runs. Runner goes, pitch is low, throw is high, and the base is stolen. That's a pretty good combination, pitch low, throw high. So Aoki steals his fourth base. He'd much rather have it the other way. He'd like to have the pitch high and the throw low. So Aoki now is at second base with two out. No score in the ball game. McGill hides the ball back of his right hip. Now Matt at the belt. And here he comes and it's foul back. So the count remains. Two balls and two strikes to Yaniski Betancourt. Bettencourt, among other things, played shortstop for Cuba's bronze medal winning team during the 2000 World Junior Championships. Here's the 2 2 pitch on the way, swung on and fouled away, and the count stays. The lights, of course, do not take effect this early in the evening. A brilliant blue sky, no sign of sunset. Matt McGill laboring a little bit here in the first inning. This will be his 23rd pitch coming up. Deuces wild, first inning, no score, and the pitch is swung on, sliced off first, down the line, back into the crowd. Two balls, two strikes, two out, runner at second, and we're just getting underway. Bettencourt, pretty famous kid in Cuba. Even on the youngster team, the 17 year olds, he hit 523. Uh, he was stamped as a definite comer to the big leagues. 2 2 pitch on the way, ground ball wide in the hole, up with it, a great stop at short. The throw is too late, but what a tremendous effort by Luis Cruz. Not only does he prevent Aoki from scoring, he actually made it close at first base. Luis Cruz going deep in the hole. Uribe couldn't get it. And while backing into left field, a high throw, but right on the money. A marvelous effort by Luis Cruz. Betancourt beats it out for an infield single. So now Milwaukee has runners at first and third. Two out. For the moment, at least, Cruz has saved a run. And the batter is Ricky Weeks. Ricky Weeks normally struggles early in the year, and he's been struggling right now. So the veteran second baseman looks at a pitch way off the plate, ball one, one and oh. Ricky is from Daytona Beach in Altamonte Springs. He's up on top of the plate all the time. He's been hit 109 times in his career. Drew the collar last night, 0 for 3, and hitting 163. McGill trying to get out of the inning, and the fastball is high, so he's behind now 2 and 0. So A.J. Reynolds going out to talk to Matt McGill. In the inning, Aoki walked, Gomez struck out, Braun hit one to deep right center. Matt Kemp made a great running catch. Aoki then steals second. Betancourt hits one to the hole. Cruz makes a highlight stop and throw too late, but it prevented the run from scoring. But now McGill is behind two balls and no strikes to Ricky Weeks. Ricky will be 30 in the middle of September, went to Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the 2-0 pitch taken for a strike, 2-1 to count. Ricky grew up with another kid, a pretty good ball player by the name of Prince Fielder. They played ball when they were about five years old, so they've known each other for a long time. Ricky waits the 2 1 pitch, swung on, ground ball to short, cruise the feed to second base to Schumacher, and that's it. No runs, one hit, big play by Luis Cruz, two left. The end is half an inning, no score.
me 27 pitches, but thanks to Luis Cruz, he got out of it. Take a look now at the Dodger lineup, trying to get him some runs. Carl Crawford in left field, and A.J. Ellis moving up to number two behind the plate. Andre Ethier in right field, and Matt Kemp hits clean up in center. Skip Schumacher is at second base. Jerry Hairston at first. Luis Cruz, you know indeed he's the shortstop. And Juan Uribe at third. Matt McGill on the mound. On the mound, Willie Peralta. And Peralta trying to keep things quiet as he looks down the Dodger bats tonight. Peralta, one and one, and really just starting out his young career. So two fellows at the age of 25 locked in here in the first inning. Willie's from the Dominican Republic. So Peralta will be pitching to Crawford, A.J. Ellis, and Andre Ethier. Peralta had Tommy John surgery back in 2007. Big right hand already comes over the top and the first pitch in for a strike. Peralta is six feet two, 235 pounds, and drafted by the Brewers back in 2005 when he was 16 years old. The strike one pitch is swung on, beaten foul. 0 and 2 the count. Crawford batting 316. Had a big night last night. Two for four. Home run. Couple of ribbies. He was also hit by a pitch and scored a run. Now the strike two pitch coming up. Peralta delivers and it's cuffed away foul to the left upstairs. So Crawford opening it up with A.J. Ellis and Andre Ethier to follow. Dodgers with a different looking lineup tonight with the absence of Adrian Gonzalez. Now Peralta ready and the pitch coming up low. If you joined us a little bit late, Adrian Gonzalez had an infection on the side of his leg. Dodgers treated it. It didn't seem to work right. So today they sent him over to the hospital to be treated and he could very well come back and get in the game. The one two pitch on the way chased and missed Crawford going after one down and dirty and he's gone and that'll bring up A.J. Ellis. But take a look at the Brewers. You have Lally and Weeks, Gonzalez and Betancourt, Braun, Gomez and Aoki and Maldonado behind the plate. Interesting we were talking about the top of the lineup for Milwaukee. Aoki was six for 44 when he walked and Ricky Weeks with runners in scoring position is off to a bad start. Weeks is just one for 21 with runners in scoring position. And yet through it all with the injuries the absence of Aramis Ramirez and Corey Hart they're just two and a half back of the Cardinals. The 1 0 pitch on the way and that's taken for a strike one and one. A.J. hitting 283. 0 for 4 last night. Peralta holds the ball out in front of him. Now drops his hands, turns, comes over the top, and just misses. And a two ball, one strike count. Peralta's fastball has been clocked as high as 99. It doesn't mean he's going to hit it tonight. But you know he can throw hard. Both the four seamer and the sinking two seamer. Peralta back and it is swung on, fouled away. Peralta also has a slider and they say a deceptive changeup. Last year Peralta struggled with his mechanics, finally got them squared away and was called up late last year and pitched well in September. The next pitch to A.J. missing, still the count goes all the way, three and two. Another thing for the Dodgers to note, should the Dodgers get some base runners, he's a little tough to steal on. He had out only nine out of 33 attempts last year. 3-2 pitch coming up, and it is swung on, grounded to short, charging in a hurry is Gonzalez. Low throw, but it's in time. Gonzalez has been playing a lot at first base, so we have some fellows who are a little bit out of position tonight. 
two out in the first inning, and Andre Eve here coming up. Andre hitting 237, two home runs, eight runs batted in. Last night had a first inning single to drive in a run. Peralta waiting for Ethier to get squared away. Now the right hander backs off, turns ready, and comes over the top. Fastball low and away, ball one. He hit 97 with that fastball. So it's there, that's for sure. And imagine trying to see 97 when the lights don't really take effect. One ball and no strikes to count. Next pitch is hit in the air to right center. Moving over to pick it off is Carlos Gomez. So the Dodgers wind up going one, two, three. And at the end of an inning, Dodgers nothing, Brewers nothing. Starting right to left, his father, Pete, wearing the baseball cap. Then his mom, Valerie. Then his sister, Molly. And then his wife, Melissa. So the Nats family is here, and we'll see how he fares in the second inning. No score. Struggled a little bit. McGill made 27 pitches in the first inning. Gave up a base hit and a walk but was saved on a big play, a stop at least by Cruz. So here's Maldonado, and the catcher takes high, ball one, one and oh. First thought you have if you've been around a while, you might remember Candy Maldonado, who played for the Dodgers among others. They're not related. Maldonado from Puerto Rico was originally signed by the Angels. He's a good size, 6'1", 225. And he'll be 27 in August. The 1-1 one, one pitch on the way is swung on and missed. One and two. So Matt McGill, we assume by the second inning, has gotten rid of most of the butterflies. Matt looks over the fingertips of his glove to get a sign. Maldonado bends slightly at the knees and waist. And the next pitch is swung on and missed. And down he goes. So everything that McGill does tonight is a first. His first walk went to Aoki. His first strikeout went to Gomez. His first single went to Betancourt. And hooray for our guy. As the family applauds. The batter now is Lolly. Blake Lolly who is playing first base. Into the windup goes McGill. Whips the fastball low. One ball and no strikes to Blake. 
Lolly appeared briefly in last night's game as a pinch hitter in the ninth inning and struck out. He takes the next one inside. Two and all the count. Lolly at a Gibsonia, Pennsylvania fights one off foul outside of first. Two and one the count to Blake. He's another good size, 6'1, 210. Went to Gardner Webb University. That's in North Carolina. They say he was crushed when he wasn't drafted. 2 1 pitch, swung on, fouled away, 2 and 2. Although he was not drafted, he was signed as a free agent by the Chicago Cubs. Lolly, the left hand hitter waiting, and the 2 2 pitch on the way. Sliced foul out of play down the left field line. Lolly was a shortstop in high school, but he was recruited by a lot of colleges to play third. Then some people wanted to see him catch. 2 2 pitch on the way is taking low ball three. So he became a pretty good defensive catcher. But he can also play first base and that's where he is tonight. Three two pitches swung on hit in the air kept going back on the ball. Still going back and reaches up to make the catch one step from the center field wall. So that ball carried well. That's the second long out to center field. With a fastball that didn't rise. We've seen several of those fastballs that just keep going up. That one flattened out. Look at the family relief and then a huge sigh of relief. So McGill with two down second inning. And Alex Gonzalez coming up. Alex Gonzalez one of many shortstops. And he's been playing first base. Alex right hand batter checking in. And the first pitch to him hit in the air to center Kemp going back turns and picks it off. So center field can be a graveyard for fly balls and that's what's going on right now. And at the end of an inning and a half no score. Forty pitches. He's gone through two innings, no score. Sitting in front of him for a little added inspiration is Clayton Kershaw, who'll be on the hill tomorrow against Loesch. So now, 
Matt Kemp will lead it off. He's already been busy running down three long fly balls. For the Dodgers, the National League team leaders in hitting, somewhat surprising, the Colorado Rockies are three and a half games in front of the Dodgers, and they're leading with a 279 batting average. Dodgers are hitting a little bit better, and more importantly than the overall team batting average, the fact that the Dodgers now are starting to get base hits with runners in scoring position. That's dramatic news for a club that really founded for the first two weeks. So Matt Kemp will start it off. Willie Peralta looks down the barrel to get a sign, and they hook up, and here we go. Peralta's first pitch, and Matt takes a strike. 0 and 1 to count. Matt hitting 259. 0 for 2 last night. They pitched very carefully to him and walked him twice. One home run, 10 RBIs. Home run was right down the right field line at City Park in New York. He hesitates and takes a pitch for a strike. And the count 0 and 2. No score. Bottom of the second inning, game two of the three game series. Peralta studying Maldonado signs and the strike two pitch on the way a little low ball one one and two. So there's nothing to go on. There's no past history to say this fella hits this fella. They haven't faced each other. So Peralta all business looks down over the tips of the glove and the one two pitch to Matt Kemp swung on roller to the left is short. Nice pick there by Gonzalez who makes the play. So Matt Kemp rounding out good play by Alex Gonzalez. Oh yes we've seen him play a lot of shortstop and he can feel. One away and Skip Schumacher coming up Schumacher playing second base tonight in the absence of Mark Ellis and then you'll have Jerry Hairston who is playing first base in the absence of Adrian Gonzalez. Schumacher takes low ball one one and oh the count. Skip is doing exactly what the Dodgers wanted. He can give you a good job at a lot of positions. The one oh pitch big swing and a miss and the count one and one. Schumacher waiting. Peralta making him wait. Now the one one pitch coming up and Schumacher fouls that away and the count one and two. Skip 0 for his last six at bats. Not doing much hitting 115 against right handers. He's played second left field center field right field designated hitter and we've only played 22 games this being number 23. He also has good numbers in his career hitting over 300 against right hand pitching and he grounds one to the right of the mound coming in to get it is Ricky Weeks and throws him out. Two down second inning and Jerry Hairston coming up. Hairston last night had to come off the bench and was very rusty. Wound up committing three of the four errors hitting 161. The extra men as they used to call them or way back they used to call themselves the Humpties the guys who couldn't make the starting lineup. So Hairston waiting Peralta over the top and it's hit to the gap and left center racing over his Gomez but he can't get it. It goes to the wall and Jerry's in the second base standing with a double. So Jerry Hairston a two out double to the gap in left center and the batter now is Luis Cruz. High fastball and Hairston drilled it. So with a runner at second two out no score. Luis Cruz checking in. 
Cruz came off the bench last night and had a line drive single left and eventually came around to score a run. Made a great play in the first inning to save a run, though we're scoreless in the second. Peralta looks back, weeks to the bag, the throw not in time but close. So Harrison trying to get as much of a lead as possible. Ricky Weeks sneaking to the bag. Close pickoff attempt. Peralta looks in to Maldonado and Cruz waits. Right hander set at the belt. Another look back at Harrison. Harrison bluffs going and the pitch is high. One ball and no strikes to Luis Cruz. It's a battle, of course, and for Luis Cruz, after that wonderful year last year, suddenly hitting only 106. Last night, the Dodgers played a rather amazing game. Tell you why in a moment. Here's the 1 0 pitch on the way to Cruz, swung on and popped into shallow right field, coming in as Aoki to make the catch. The thing that was amazing last night, the Dodgers had four two out hits to drive in runs. Not now, and at the end of two, no score. Be Willie Peralta, the pitcher for Milwaukee, and into the windup goes Matt McGill and his fastball for a strike, 0 and 1. When that fastball is up and it rises, that is really some pitch. If it flattens out, then you have those long fly balls to center. He misses away and a one ball, one strike count. Pitch count now, Matt's up to 42 pitches. The 1 1 pitch on the way. Swung on and missed one and two. So the pitcher Willie Peralta not a bad hitter coming up there at 429 which means he's three for seven and the one two pitch is swung on and missed and down he goes that fastball was down and that would be the third strikeout for Matt McGill. Now to the top of the order and Norachika Aoki. Aoki is a very interesting player to watch. Twice over in Japan he had 200 hits. But he never seems to have the same batting stance. And among other things he reminds you a little bit of Rafael for call. He has what you might call a swinging bunt. Among other things in his arsenal. And he takes high. He has five infield hits this year. The 1 0 pitch on the way, and that's low. So, two balls and no strikes. 
Nora Chika Aoki, 5'9, 180. The 2 0 pitch on the way, taken low. Aoki walked in the first inning. Aoki is 31 from Miyazaki in Japan. Played for years for the Yakult Swallows. Shows Bunt takes a strike. The Yakult Swallows, it cost Milwaukee a couple of million dollars just to talk to him. 3 1 pitch, and that's low. So Aoki, for the second time, draws a walk, and he's a threat to steal. He already stole in the first inning. Hanley Ramirez bobblehead night. That's Tuesday at 7:10, and the first 50,000 fans with the Rockies take home their own ICU Hanley bobblehead, compliments of Dinamita. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com/promotions. Carlos Gomez struck out in the first inning. Gomez very much of a multi-talented player. So McGill has a tough job. He has to keep an eye on Aoki and at the same time pitch to Gomez. Right hand batter 0 for 1. From the Dominican Republic hits one into right field for a base hit. Ethier up with it on two hops. Aoki holding at second base. So with one out, a walk followed by a single to right, and now here comes the big brewer, and that would be Ryan Braun. Little breaking ball, but it stayed up. So Gomez at first, Aoki at second, and Ryan Braun coming up. Ryan Braun, a brewer, and we mentioned it last night. His mom is not only a marathoner, she once ran in the uh, sausage race in Milwaukee, so she has to have a delightful personality. But she's also a brewer. She makes beer for Anheuser Busch in Van Nuys. Ground ball to third. It's going to be on the bag, but foul. All eyes on Angel Hernandez, the third baseman, to make the call. Third base umpire. Oh, and one to count. Big high chopper. Angel doesn't give you the call until your rebate was all set to throw. Oh, and one to Ryan Braun. Braun going after the first pitch, and he does that easily 40 some odd percent of the time. Little number back to the box. A throw and safe at second base. The Dodgers had two men go to the bag, both Cruz and Schumacher. And McGill, I assume, was instructed to throw, and he threw it to the wrong man. Schumacher got it, but he was just backing up Cruz. So uh, wait and see. One minute he made a great pitch, then hurrying to make the throw, it went to the wrong man, and Schumacher had to leave the bag to make the catch. So the Brewers have loaded the bases and we will see if there will be an error charge or just a fielder's choice. Base is loaded with one out and here is Uneski Betancourt who singled a short and he takes ball one. So Braun at first, Gomez at second, Aoki at third. Dodgers should have had an out, but didn't get it. Betancourt, right hand batter, swings and hits it in the air into center. One run will score, and everybody else will hold out. So a little fly ball single to center by Betancourt. Braun goes to second. Gomez advances to third, and Aoki brings in the run. So the Brewers one run three hits and Ricky Weeks will be coming up. Bases remain loaded Gomez Braun and Betancourt are all out there and now time Rick Honeycutt wants to go out and I'm sure if nothing else break the mood. In other words the comeback by Braun should have been an out. 
McGill threw it to the wrong side of the bag and then perhaps upset over that he gives up a single immediately to Betancourt to Honeycutt going out there and saying hey take it easy it's only the third inning. So one out one nothing Milwaukee Rick holding cord out there and all the while a very hungry Ricky Weeks remember we told you he was one for twenty one with runners in scoring position that's an old forty eight batting average he is hitting two fifty for the year and he's up there now with two runners in scoring position Ricky has never had a grand slam. McGill trying to work his way out of a jam and the right hander out of a stretch. The pitch to Weeks swung on hit foul off to the right out of play and the count 0 and 1 to Ricky. The Dodgers missing Adrian Gonzalez and Milwaukee missing Gene Segura their shortstop who broke a nail fielding ground balls before the game. Here's the strike one pitch to Weeks and that's fouled away 0 and 2. I'm sure like any young hard throwing right hander all those words go together but there's another word and you can add wild and when McGill was at Albuquerque he walked 14 in 19 innings. So he's walked two here and it's hurt him. 0 oh and 2 the count. To Ricky Weeks. The next pitch low in the dirt, another nice block by A.J. Ellis. So with one out, Aoki walked, Gomez a single to right, then the fielder's choice on the comeback by Braun to load the bases, and Betancourt single picked up a run. One and two the count. Here comes McGill, ground ball to third, charging Uribe to second for one over the first way too late. I'm not sure if Uribe would have made that play again if given a second opportunity. The ball got to him in a reasonable hurry. So number one, he had to play at home. Then by the time he got it to second, there was no chance. Weeks was already out of the frame. So ground ball to third the run comes in on the force play. It is two to nothing in favor of Milwaukee. Ricky Weeks gets a run batted in and Uribe now has to contend with Martin Maldonado. So McGill trying to get out of it cheaply enough. Right hander set runners at the corners and the pitch is foul back. Ricky Weeks over at first base is four for four in stolen bases. So we'll see if that means something as far as Ron Renicky possibly running him. The so Ron deep in thought on the railing. Brewers are two and a half games back of the St. Louis Cardinals, one game above 500. The pitch in for a strike and the count to Maldonado who struck out in the second inning 0 and 2. Now A.J. Ellis out in front of the plate keeping everybody in the ball game. Two out 0 and 2 count runners at first and third. They have to wonder about weeks. McGill. Working on some gum. Looks down to get a sign from AJ and trying to get the third strike and the third out. Strike two pitch is swung on and missed. He got both the strike and the out. Second time that he's gotten Maldonado. Four strikeouts for McGill, but the Brewers touch him for two and lead two to nothing.
Matt McGill has made 61 pitches in three innings, so you know he's not going to be around too long if that keeps up. And secondly, the Brewers have fouled off 15 pitches, and that's a killer. So add it all together. Meanwhile, as we told you, Colorado atop the heap, Arizona and the Giants two back, Dodgers three and a half, San Diego picking up the rear, seven and a half back. So now let's see about the Dodgers, Uribe, McGill, and Crawford. 2 nothing, Milwaukee. Peralta gets the first one over for a strike. Uribe hitting 174, 0 for 2 last night. Strike one pitch on the way, he backs off, a little low, 1 and 1. Uribe last night hit one ball very hard, lined out the third while walking and going over two. The 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Check swing, it'll cost a strike. One ball and two strikes. Bottom of the third, two to nothing in favor of Milwaukee and Willie Peralta. The next pitch foul back, so Uribe hanging tough. Brewers two runs three hits Dodgers no runs one hit couple of questionable plays the comeback of by Braun and McGill hurrying his throw to the wrong man Schumacher pitch in the dirt to the backstop that was a key so the fourth play might very well have been the last out instead a run scored. So it is two to nothing Milwaukee and the Dodgers now trying to get back in it. Matt McGill on deck and then Carl Crawford. Two balls and two strikes. Peralta delivers low again. Looked like he was trying to get a little something extra. My gosh he's throwing 96 and 97 but he certainly overthrew that time. McGill waits. Three and two. Peralta into his windup. Right handed delivers. It swung on and banged into right center for a base hit. Carlos Gomez comes up with it. And Uribe opens up matters in the third inning with a line drive single to right center. So now Matt McGill. And I would think the first thing we would find out about Matt McGill is whether he can bunt. Uribe got a ball up, bangs it into right center, and now let's see. Certainly Milwaukee expecting the rookie to bunt. We shall see. Miguel is six feet three, so he gives you a pretty good strike zone. Now let's see if he can get the bunt down. He shows bunt. Brewers look bunt. And he gets the bunt down. The tag by first baseman coming up, and that's it. So the sacrifice works as Lolly makes the tag, and McGill does his job advancing a rebate to second. So a nice bunt. Just did get on the grass and stay fair. Lolly came down to pick it up, and McGill had nowhere to go, but he gets fives in the dugout, did his job. One out runner at second base, two to nothing Milwaukee. And Carl Crawford, who is as different as night and day as home and road. Carl hitting 421 here, 214 on the road. And the pitch to Crawford swung on and missed on one. Foul two home runs, four runs batted in, struck out in the first inning. Peralta set, another look back at Uribe, and the strike one pitch on the way. That's taken low and inside and gets away, and Uribe goes to third. Maldonado pointing and hollering to Peralta to cover the plate while he went after the ball. So now. Carl Crawford has a chance to pick up a run on a wild pitch. Attempted backhanded by Maldonado, who then directs the pitcher to cover. 
So Crawford now with a chance. The infield is back. It's 2 nothing Milwaukee. We're only in the third. And the Dodgers have a runner at third with one out. The 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Peralta delivers and that's hit in the air. Foul down the left field line. And well back into the crowd. We have a sizable crowd tonight. You would certainly have to believe it's well over 40,000. Last night we had 44,930. One and two to Crawford. Peralta set looks over at Uribe coming down the line and the pitch to Crawford is swung on and missed again a pitch low below the strike zone. And down he goes. That's a huge out. The Crawford goes fishing, as the kids say. Too anxious, especially with that runner at third. So the batter now is A.J. Ellis. So a missed opportunity for Carl Crawford. It's still two to nothing in favor of the Brewers. A.J. waiting and takes in the dirt blocked by Maldonado ball rolls about 10 feet away not far enough for your rebate or risk. The Maldonado makes a good save one ball and no strikes the count coming into the game. Peralta does not have a wild pitch until the pitch he made to advance your rebate. Willie a long look in Ellis waiting the 1 0 pitch on the way Peralta delivers swung on and missed and the count one and one before the game Don Mattingly said about Mark Ellis I feel like it's good news he feels better today we'll see what it looks like tomorrow before making decisions Mark going out with a strained quad last night they could ill afford to lose him. He was off to a great start. The pitch to A.J. is swung on a little flare over the glove of a leaping Ricky Weeks. Scoring on the base hit is Uribe, and it is two to one Milwaukee. A.J. Ellis just did get it over the efforts of Ricky Weeks, who went up the ladder to the last run and was just short of a catch. So AJ gets the base hit, a run batted in, and now Andre Ethier. For the Dodgers, as they have been doing of late, another two out RBI. Boy, of all the things they've been doing, they have done a complete about face in that department. So here's Ethier. Peralta delivers, big overhand pitch. Took a lot off that. That was his changeup. One ball and no strikes. Ethier fly to center in the first inning. Andre struggling a bit, hitting just 234. Peralta set. They're not going to hold A.J. Ellis. The pitch of the plate, Ethier punches it on the ground to third. Backhanded by Betancourt and the throw to first in time. So Ethier can't pick up Ellis, but Ellis did pick up Uribe. Dodgers get one, and at the end of three, two to one, Milwaukee.
Milwaukee leads the Dodgers 2-1 to one as we go to the fourth inning. And it will be Burke Lolly followed by Alex Gonzalez. And then the pitcher, Willie Peralti. First pitch from McGill misses. Give you an idea, in three innings, McGill has made 61 pitches. Peralta has made 41 pitches. And ball two. McGill has allowed one run, three hits, walked Aoki, the leadoff man, twice, and his 2 0 pitch on the way. Strike. Matt struck out four. Two and two. Game two of these six meetings between the two teams. Dodgers will finish up with Milwaukee in May on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Slap foul right into the Dodger dugout. Very close to getting Rick Honeycutt. Lolly hit a long fly ball to center. Fine running catch by Matt Kemp. This time foul down the line. Kyle Loesch and Clayton Kershaw tomorrow. Two and two to Burke Lolly. Kid out of Pennsylvania. Fouled away. Lolly 6 1, 2 10. It'd be 30 the middle of May. Pretty much in the minor leagues except for six games with the Cubs. And stiff wristed foul. Take a look at that swing. It's almost like a hockey player trying to drive the puck into the goal. Take the, look at the hands. They don't really roll over. That left hand stays on top. Still two and two. And he's hacking them away. Lolly and looking at his minor leagues and his numbers, he had over 300 a couple of times. However, once he got up to the higher classifications, another story. Two and two. And got him. So Lolly becomes strikeout victim number five for Matt McGill. A reminder, Tuesday, May 7th, Dodgers and Diamondbacks at 7:10. First 40,000 fans in attendance at the game receive a Dodgers whole new blue theme T-shirt presented by Las Vegas. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash promotions. Five strikeouts for Matt McGill. And here's Alex Gonzalez and a strike. We were talking before about foul balls. There's another one. How important a part they play in a game, and yet we always overlook it. Give you an idea, compare the two pitches. McGill has now had 21 foul balls, six by Lowry. Peralta has only had six in three innings. Well, Gonzalez goes after a bad ball and becomes strikeout victim number six. And he's also the third consecutive strikeout for Matt. That's that fastball. That is a heck of a pitch. It's there, and then it winds up up around the eyes. That's great. Watch it. 
upstairs. So now he has Peralta. A little ground ball to first. Harrison to the bag. And that'll be that. So that impressive pitch we first saw when he threw it by Braun has popped up to help him. It's still two to one Milwaukee. to you by your Southern California Kia retailers. Visit MySoCalKia.com by AT&T Rethink Possible and by your SoCal Ram dealers. Visit RamTrucks.com Bottom of the fourth inning, 2-1 to one, Milwaukee. A beautiful evening. Hardly a zephyr stirring the leaves on the palm trees and the flags in center field hang limply as we move on to the fourth. For young Matt McGill, he has struck out six. He's made 75 pitches in four innings and a little better defensive play by himself. He might still not have allowed a run, but he's very much in the game. Two to one Brewers and Matt Kemp followed by Skip Schumacher and then Jerry Harrison. Matt Kemp grounded to short in the second inning. So Matt 0 for 1. Matt a home run 10 runs batted in the three big putouts in center field tonight. That stayed up. One ball and one strike. Meanwhile Peralta is doing very well. Dodgers have had five men come to the plate in the third inning and that's the most he's had to work. And that's a foul ball off his foot so Kemp is still there. One and two the count. Now Matt's going to have to walk it off. Looked like got him on the instep of the left foot. One ball and two strikes to Matt Kemp. And he reaches for one and hits a flare for a base hit. So Matt going after one well out of the strike zone, but he will take it. Little fly ball dunker into center. And Skip Schumacher will be coming up. Look at the location on that pitch. 
well down below the knees. So a little pop fly single. Tying run is aboard. Two runs, three hits for Milwaukee. One run, four hits for the Dodgers. Schumacher grounded out in the second inning. Brewers are not sure. Betancourt is about even with the bag at third. And ball one. Schumacher followed by Hairston. Dodgers got a run in the third inning. Uribe single. Sacrifice to second. Wild pitch to third. And A.J. Ellis single to right to pick him up. 2-1 Brewers. There goes Kemp. The pitch in the dirt. High throw. And a missed tag. Alice Gonzalez thought he might have gotten him. But Kemp is in there. For Matt Kemp. Just getting underneath the high tag. Gonzalez thought he got him on the foot. But his hand was already on the bag. There. For Matt Kemp. That's his fourth stolen base. He's four for four. With nobody out, let's see now if Schumacher tries to bunt him over to third or get a ball to pull. And a strike. Two and one. Maldonado every now and then looking over at Ron Renicky. Dodgers tying run at second. Nobody out. Two to one Brewers. Two and two. Hitting back of him. Jerry Harrison. The Brewers two runs on three hits. The Dodgers one run on four hits. Willie Peralta and Matt McGill. And ball three. Milwaukee under 500 on the road and a couple above 500 at home. Three and two. And a slow roller that'll get Kemp over. Gonzalez throws it away. So Kemp will score to tie it up. Schumacher will go to second. So Matt Kemp singles going after a bad ball and hits a little blooper for a base hit steals second and on the chopper to get him over to third Gonzalez instead throws it away. The so Kemp scores on the error. Schumacher goes to second on the error and the Dodgers have tied it up. So Alex Gonzalez who is a good shortstop, but he's been playing a lot of first base. So that might have taken something out of his ability. So now the batter is Hairston. Still nobody out. In a 2-2 tie. Ball one. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. Two runs, three hits. And an error for the Brewers. No RBI, just a plain flat out two base error. One and oh to Jerry. Schumacher trying to find out where Alex Gonzalez is. Fouled away. One and one. Maldonado now going to go out to talk to Peralta.
if they had played each other a lot and you see a catcher go out they might have that thought that maybe the runner at second is looking in stealing signs but they just don't play each other enough for that. Schumacher is really just concerned to make sure that Alex Gonzalez doesn't run up his back. He doesn't have to worry about weeks. One ball and one strike. Big slow breaking ball for a strike. One and two. Hairston hitting 188. Doubled in the second inning. Two two. Bottom of the fourth. Would not bite. Two balls and two strikes. Peralta has now made 54 pitches in comparison to Young McGill, who's made 75. Two and two. Luis Cruz on deck. Nobody out. And ground ball, but that will send the runner Schumacher back. So one out. Hairston unable to move him up a notch. And Luis Cruz. Cruz fly to right in the second inning. 0 for 1. Cruz average now has drifted down to 104. Well, you don't think he's fighting it. And the strike. 0 and 1. Cruz has already made a vital contribution in the first inning. Yoneski Betancourt. Hit a ball to the hole at short that would have scored Aoki. And Cruz made a great play. It went for a base hit, but he prevented the ball from getting through and the run scoring. Nice save there by Maldonado. One ball and one strike. Willie Peralta. Brewers playing without Corey Hart, Ramos Ramirez, and their starting staff has changed considerably. One ball and one strike. Fastball hit down the line in the corner and will land foul untouched. So Cruz comes back to try it again. Back to second base goes Schumacher. With one out, fourth inning in a 2 2 tie. Clayton Kershaw and Carl Loesch tomorrow. Then the Dodgers will await the arrival of Colorado. One and two the count. High fly ball, very playable. Braun started in, then goes back and makes the catch, holding at second base, Schumacher. And the batter will be Juan Uribe. Juan Uribe last year in 66 games walked 13 times. This year in 12 games. He's walked nine times. Now normally he will swing at the first pitch at least 34, 35% of the time. 
This year, he's cut that down to 21 percent. So he's a little more patient at the plate this year than last. But as a veteran player, of course, you would expect him to have learned patience a long time ago. I think he became very impatient after he signed the big contract with the Dodgers after having hit 24 home runs with the Giants the year before. I mean we're talking about a guy who played in the big leagues in 2001. One ball no strikes. Ball two. Uribe will be 34 the end of July. Spent a long time with the White Sox and they're going to take the bat out of his hands and go after Matt McGill. Though so there is another walk to Juan Uribe. Albeit intentionally granted. But a he didn't swing at the first pitch. And the first pitch was ball one. So two on, two out, bottom of the fourth, in a 2 2 tie. Matt McGill sacrificed in the third inning. Wonder how his mom and dad, wife and sister are holding up in a tough ball game. Out, 0 and 1. There they are. Sisters taking a picture. Mom and dad. And his wife Melissa just sitting calmly, hands in her lap. Little roller up along third, charging and the throw high, but they get him anyway. Nice play by Bettencourt. So the Dodgers get one run, one hit, one very big error. And at the end of four, a 2 2 tie. you buy your Southern California Toyota dealers by Time Warner enjoy all the things you love better 1855 want TWC and by 76 we're on the driver's side fifth inning we have a 2 2 tie and checking a few other things we can give you scores Meanwhile, Matt McGill getting ready to pitch to Aoki, Gomez, and Braun. We want to tell you, Mom, that Bryce Harper hit a two-run home run. And there's an interesting note for Harper hitting that many home runs at his tender age. 
in 24 games Harper has hit nine home runs. Only Matt Mellot hit 10 in 24 games and he was under 21. So Harper gets his name locked in with one of the better home run hitters in National League history Melvin Thomas on. Aoki has walked twice. One and one. Aoki walked stole second but stayed at third in the first inning and came home on a leadoff walk in the third. Foul ball. It's not like Ishiro you know Ishiro starts to run and then he swings but Aoki you can understand number one he makes contact so much. You can see why he had 200 hits twice in Japan. He struck out five times in almost a hundred plate appearances. However he comes into this game struggling. Six for his last 44. But he has walked twice. Two and two. Little ground ball. He always runs out from under his hat. He moves very well. So one away in the fifth inning as Cruz nails him. Center fielder number 27, Carlos Gomez. Carlos Gomez coming up, struck out single to right, scored a run. Gomez had a ball hit over his head and went off his glove last night, hit by Adrian Gonzalez. It produced two runs, and the Dodgers went on to win the game. But Ron Renicky and his staff felt that the Brewers should have won it. And they felt that Gomez did not make the play properly. The replay showed that among other things it went off the heel of his glove. And then he slipped and fell down. Two and all. Ground ball of the hole, long throw. Cruz can't make it. Cruz in a hurry to backhand and throw. There's the backhand, and then whoops, like a piece of wet soap comes flying out of his hand. We're waiting, and they're going to rule it a base hit. Bill Gomez aboard with his second hit and now Ryan Braun checking in. Gomez a tiebreaker over there at first base has stolen two and he's been caught twice. Braun the big man seven home runs 21 runs batted in. They talk splits they use the word splits for a hitter let's say hitting day and night home or on the road left against right. There's also a split for a team. Home and road. The Cincinnati Reds lost to Bryce Harper in Washington tonight. The Reds are one and eight on the road. Twelve and four at home. Oh and one the count to Ryan. Braun is six two about two hundred and five pounds. He lifts it to right field. Ethier to the line. Makes the catch. Gomez didn't tag until the play was about over. So Braun, who can reach the seats in right field, flies to right. And Yaneski Betancourt. Single to the hole at short. That was a big play by Cruz. It prevented a run. And then single to center in the third. 
when the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the fifth top of the order Crawford Ellis Ethier. So Betancourt two for two. Certainly now with two out they will keep an eye on Gomez. Hit near the right center. It's playable apparently. And it's Ethier. So McGill gets a fly ball to right. That's the end of the inning. No runs. A man left. Still 2 2. What's your favorite ballpark food? Would it be Dodger dogs, Dodger nachos, Dodger cracker jacks, or Dodger peanuts? Well, tweet hashtag Dodger and then dogs, nachos, cracker jacks, or peanuts, and keep tuning in, and we'll see the results. Bottom of the fifth inning, it'll be the top of the order. Carl Crawford, A.J. Ellis. And then Andre Ethier. Crawford's had a tough time with Peralta. He has struck out twice. We were talking about splits, how well Crawford has done at home compared on the road. And in his strikeouts tonight, each time the third strike was on a pitch just about in the dirt. Of course, most left hand hitters like the ball down anyway, but uh, that was a little too much. 0 and 1. Off the plate. For Matt McGill, he has now made 86 pitches in five innings. Peralta has made 67. And hit in the air to center. Gomez was right there. So one away here in the fifth inning. Dodger catcher number 17, AJ Ellis. Dodgers have been fortunate tonight because Peralta's pitched very well. A wild pitch helped the Dodgers to get a run in the third inning. And then in the fourth inning, a throwing error by the shortstop Alex Gonzalez. And then Milwaukee on the same note has been fortunate. Their two runs were a little tainted. Back in the third inning. AJ hitting 290. 0 oh and 1. Right. 0 oh and 2. Peralta has been throwing strikes all night. The only walk was an intentional walk given to Juan Uribe. 
little comeback and nice play by Peralta. So we have two down in the fifth inning and Andre Ethier coming up in a 2 2 tie. Right field, number 16, Andre Ethier. Andre Ethier flies to center, grounded to third, 0 for 2, hitting just 231. In breaking down Ethier's batting average, you find that he's actually hitting better against left hand pitching. That's a surprise. Off speed for a strike. You could see Andre double clutch. Bottom of the fifth, two out, a 2 2 tie. Fouled off to the left out of play. One and two to Andre. Matt Kemp waiting on deck. In the dirt, got his foot out of the way. Two and two to count. Matt Kemp tonight rounded to short and got a little pop fly single to center, but stole a base and then scored on an error. Two and two. Fly ball to left field. Braun is there. So the Dodgers tiptoe through the fifth inning, and at the end of five, a 2 2 tie. The first thing you'll see is that Fernando Valenzuela shut out the Giants five to nothing. Then you dig a little deeper and you find out that's his fourth shutout in five starts. Then you dig a little deeper and you find out Fernando was hitting 400. And finally you dig a little bit more. His earned run average was 0 0.2. Wow. Let's go back to this one. Nineteen eighty one. Mm. But what a memory. Ricky Weeks twice has hit into force plays. Two runs, four hits for each side. Slow breaking ball for a strike. We haven't seen that pitch too often from Matt. 
He's now made 88 pitches so they're going to back him up. J.P. Howell begins to warm up in the Dodger bullpen. Slider hit to short. Cruz. So weak steps to short, one away. And the batter, Martin Maldonado. Maldonado was struck out twice against Matt. Outside of that third inning, where he had his own problems fielding, he was sandaled along nicely. And of course, the first inning, I assume, you would have to chalk up the butterflies. A bunt attempt foul. Oh, and one the count. Maldonado has struck out in the second inning and again in the third. Hill tried to dump one for a hit. Burke Lolly hitting back of Maldonado. In the dirt. Matt McGill. Pitch count slowly but sure edging up. He's now made 92 pitches. Rick Honeycutt, Don Mattingly watching him carefully. Boy, he giving the club a huge lift. One and two. Two and two. Yes, low with that fastball. Three and two. And lifted to right center. Ethier. So Maldonado a slicing fly ball we call them room service they come to you and the batter will be Blake Lolly who went out deep to center a nice running catch by Matt Kemp and then last time up Lolly struck out. Lolly from Gibsonia Pennsylvania. That's a breaking ball strike. Getting close now. Next pitch number 97. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the sixth, it'll be Matt Kemp, then Skip Schumacher, Jerry Harrison, and for Mattingly and Honeycutt. They'll have a decision to make about McGill. Ground ball to Cruz. A very nice six innings turned in by young Matt McGill. Yes, I'm. He gets a standing ovation from his family. You bet. And at the end of five and a half, two two tie.
Spliff just rushed into the breach when Stephen Fife came down with the Bursitis and Mac six innings allowing two earned runs six strikeouts and one hit in his last three innings. He also made 98 pitches and now the Dodgers trying to get him a run and maybe a win. No sign that he's coming out after making 98 pitches. So he's sitting back comfortably, relaxed, and we shall see. Matt Kemp grounded to short, single to center, stole a base, scored a run. Slice down the right field line. Aoki was playing him over there, but he has to play it on a bounce. So Matt has two hits. One, a little pop fly in the center, and a little slicing fly ball for a base hit to right. Going down to get it. Okie, not quite over enough to the line. So a leadoff single. Now Kemp stole second in the fourth inning. We'll see what happens now. Two runs, five hits for the Dodgers. Two runs, four hits for the Brewers. Ball one. I looked down in the Dodger dugout, and I believe, I think I see Adrian Gonzalez. Remember, right, right behind Manningly, I think he is, talking to A.J. Ellis. If you weren't with us, Adrian Gonzalez had an infection, a slight cut or infection. They treated it. They didn't like the looks of it, so they sent him to the hospital. They said he was going to return and could play, and here he is. So he could still be a factor in the game. That was close. Kemp was acting like the man who wanted to run. Schumacher, Hairston, and Cruz trying to get him around. 2 2 tie, bottom of the sixth. One ball and one strike to skip. Loesch and Kershaw tomorrow, and then the surprising Rockies coming in. Rockies at the start of the day were well, one game above 500 on the road, but they had won nine of 12 at home. Kemp with a short lead. And he goes late, and there's a flare in the left field. I'm not sure if Kemp thought there was a hit and run play on, but he took a while before he took off, and Schumacher just slapped it into left field. So the Dodgers have something going. There's Matt kind of hesitating, stopping, and then moving up a notch. See how Kemp is. And then he goes to second. He couldn't have gone to third, even on a full clean break. But he wasn't quite sure. So two on, nobody out. Here's Hairston. And you have Cruz on deck. But you also have Adrian Gonzalez in the dugout. And he's putting on batting gloves. So we'll see. Does that mean Hairston's going to bunt? Yep. And ball one. So Kemp at second, Schumacher at first. Dodgers have a half a dozen hits to go with their two runs. And a chance finally to break through. Peralta's been very tough.
One ball, no strikes. And the bunt is fouled. So one ball, one strike. Fouled right into Maldonado. With all that protection, he felt it on the jaw. One and one. One and two. So Hairston trying to get the bun down, hasn't been able to do it. Matt Kemp at second with his base hit. Skip Schumacher at first, nobody out. Dodgers trying to break a 2 2 tie. Dodgers have won four of their last five. Though trying to add to that with Kershaw trying to put a ribbon on the package tomorrow. One and two. He's swinging and taking instead. So they took the bunt off on that pitch. Let's see whether it's on or off now. Peralta's only walk was intentionally given to Uribe in the fourth inning. Two and two. He's off the rubber. And now Maldonado going out. In looking at Betancourt, he's back to a normal depth at third, the same for Lolly at first. So they're convinced that Hairston is not going to try to bunt. Tom Grossolani, a left hander, throwing down in the pen. So they're positive Hairston with two strikes will not try to bunt. We'll see. And ball three. Waiting on deck, Luis Cruz. Ron Renicky, deep in thought, he knows full well that Adrian Gonzalez is over in the Dodger dugout. Nobody out three and two with runners at first and second runners hold and that's popped in the air foul and out of play. Still three and two quite a battle going on here between Hairston and Peralta. Fly ball in the left center. It is playable. Gomez will make the catch. Kemp tags up and he beats a great throw. Whoa. What a wonderful throw by the center fielder Carlos Gomez. You talk about on the money, and only somebody with Kemp speed could beat this. Look at wow, that is big league. So Hairston with a fly ball to center advances Kemp to third. Dodgers at first and third with Cruz coming up. Cruz fly to right, fly to left. And watching Carlos Gomez throw the ball to third, that is something I really miss. For a long, long time, teams would take infield and then they would take outfield and you would see the arms on the outfielders. They throw to second, to third, and finally home. But they don't do that anymore. But boy, that was a great throw. Hmm. Round foul right into the Dodger dugout.
Oh and one the count. Juan Uribe is out on deck. Now wearing a helmet and holding the bat, Adrian Gonzalez. Cruz flied to right, flied to left. One and one. Brewers got their two runs in the third inning. Dodgers got a run in the third and a run in the fourth to tie it up. One ball, one strike. Little ground ball to the right side. They only get one. Scoring is Kemp, and the Dodgers take a three to two lead. A modest thing, and I know. However, it's a run batted in. So Matt Kemp touches them all with a base hit and works his way around. Cruz gets some fives. Dodgers lead 3-2. It also means Peralti is due to bat second in the seventh inning, and he's probably on the edge of coming out. So here's your rebate. And now finally. We first spotted him in the dugout, then we saw him putting on his batting gloves, then we saw him on the steps, and here he is, Adrian Gonzalez. And ball one, Uribe singled the center and was intentionally walked. Again, he was walked when he took the first pitch for ball one, then they put him on. One and one. Dodgers three runs, six hits. Milwaukee two runs, four hits. Dodgers in one run games have won four out of five. Two and one. Down in the Dodger bullpen, you have the left handers Paco Rodriguez and J.P. Howell. Due up would be Alex Gonzalez, then Peralta Spot, and Aoki. Two and one to Uribe. And a strike. Big breaking ball. Two and two. And hard ground ball backing up on it as Benton Court makes the play. So Uribe hits it hard at the third baseman. The Dodgers get themselves one run, two hits, and at the end of six, lead 3-2.
end results. What's your favorite ballpark food? Dodger Dogs, the winner by far, 86%. Then a tie with nachos and peanuts and Cracker Jacks picking up the rear. Meanwhile, we go to the seventh tough ball game, 3-2 Dodgers. Matt McGill facing Alex Gonzalez. And ball one. So through six innings, Peralta made 96 pitches and Matt 98. Ground ball smothered by Uribe. Nice play by Juan on a sharply hit ball to his left. Another thing to look at as far as McGill is concerned. Because of his own defensive problems he had trouble in the third inning. The last three and a third innings he's allowed an infield single. Gene Segura a very talented shortstop who broke a fingernail fielding ground balls and couldn't make the starting lineup. And Gene is coming up to hit and he can hit. Segura last night had two hits two for five. Little slider for a strike. Gene Segura hitting three fifty nine. Milwaukee got him in the Granky deal to the Angels. Oh and two. Segura is from the the Dominican Republic 5'11 175. Angel signed him in 2007. And got it. Bill McGill strikes out number seven. And he appears to be very much at home now with a fastball at the knees. So Aoki coming up. Aoki has walked twice, grounded out, scored once, and now I think the Dodgers, with the two left handers in the pen, that had to be the thinking. We would let McGill go out and face Gonzalez and Segura. But Paco is down there. In fact, JP Howell has stopped and right into Matt Guerrero. And it's going to be. Well, let's wait and see. There they are, mom and dad, sister and wife. A thrill for sure. And he gets a standing ovation. But a kid from Simi Valley, a heartwarming moment in his life for sure. However, the game's not over, and we'll be back.
Matt McGill did number 36 proud. We told you 36 was first worn by Casey Stengel and later on by Don Newcomb. And he just lived up to its history. But now it's up to Paco Rodriguez, a roundhouse breaking ball to Aoki and ball one. Dodgers make a couple of changes if you're keeping score. Rodriguez will go into Uribe spot. One and one. Adrian Gonzalez will bat ninth and play first base, so he'll lead off in the bottom of the seventh. And Hairston just moves from first to third. One ball and one strike. A drag bunt. Sooner or later, you're going to see him do that. And the throw is back into the dugout. So Aoki gets himself, I'm sure, a bunt single, and he'll reach on the error charge. Center fielder, number 27, Carlos That would be his uh, sixth infield hit and then the throw by Schumacher will draw an error. So the tying runs at second base with two out and Carlos Gomez is the batter. And it looks like Mattingly will perhaps make another change. He had Matt Guerrier throwing in the bullpen and Paco Chased on a bunt single. Here comes Matt, and we'll be back. Shooting for Stephen Fife, who had bursitis, and Matt goes six and two thirds, allowed four hits, two runs, walked two, and struck out seven. The seventh was Gene Segura for the second out in the inning. Then the drag bunt single and the throwing error. So Aoki, the tying run at second, and the hitter is Carlos Gomez against Guerrero. And ball one. Gomez a wonderful all around player. And he will be with Milwaukee for quite a time. They signed him recently to a lengthy contract. One ball and no strikes. Fouled away. From Santiago in the Dominican Republic. In March of this year, Gomez signed a deal for four years. One ball and one strike. Breaking ball hit in the air to left field and deep, and she is gone. Matt Guerrier 
hangs a breaking ball. Carlos Gomez rides it out. And just like that, Milwaukee has turned it around, turned the dream game of Matt McGill into a heartbreak. And the Brewers take a 4-3 to three lead. Breaking ball, and he just timed it, and there was no doubt about it. So the bunt single by Aoki and the home run by Gomez. The bunt single belonged to Rodriguez. So Rodriguez is the pitcher of record. And McGill now has nothing to do with it after six and two thirds of great work. I'm not sure if his mom and dad sister and wife were watching that or whether they had uh, already decided they'd seen enough after the great. Yeah there they are. That's baseball. Ball three. Dodger bullpen has given up four home runs now in 23 games. Just the pen. In there. For Guerrero, that was the first home run that he's allowed. Three and two, the count to Ryan Braun. So it was two to nothing Milwaukee then two to one then two two then the Dodgers led three two. Now Milwaukee leads four three. Braun hacking away. Ryan Braun in the past has a home run against career. Two for ten. Ryan. Well, Ryan Braun tonight 0 for 3. And ball 4. The first and second, and all this with two out. The bunt single, the throwing error by Schumacher, the home run by Gomez, and now the walk to Braun. Betancourt 2 for 3. The Yaneski hitting 294. Ryan Braun has stolen one base. He's been caught twice. There he goes. Pitch inside for the corner. The throw in time to get him. Ryan Braun stole 30 bases last year and 33 bases the year before, but not tonight. However, it's 4 3 Milwaukee. Ladies and gentlemen, the boys are.
Hands of mice and men into the name Matt McGill. Take a look at the Dodger box score right now. As you can see, one hit on the top three, and then four more hits with Cam Schumacher and Hairston. So not much of an attack, but they had that lead, only to see it disappear on the two-run home run by Carlos Gonzalez. Guerrero made 11 pitches. One of them was the breaking ball that hurt him, and the subsequent home run. Tom Gorsolani, you may remember when he pitched with Pittsburgh. He is from Pittsburgh, went to Triton Junior College. He was a second round pick by the Pirates back in 2003. He went from the Pirates in 2008 to the Cubs, then two years with the Nationals, and now here he is pitching for Milwaukee. Gorsolani. Originally drafted by the White Sox, but didn't sign. He went to the University of Kansas. Adrian Gonzalez, his first at bat of the night. Bottom of the seventh, 4 3 Brewers, and a strike, 0 and 1. Adrian is certainly the big butter and egg man for the Dodgers. One ball and one strike. Gorsolani basically fastball, what they call a slurvy kind of a slider. He also has a curveball, a splitter, and a chain. He's behind now two and one. Gorsolani is 6'2, 205 pounder. He'll be 31 in the middle of July. In at the knuckles, ball three. Tom's best year with the Pirates, he won 14 games. Waiting on deck, Carl Crawford. Three and one to Adrian Gonzalez. A little ground ball up with it easily is Lolly. So Gonzalez grounds out one away. You know, follow the at Dodgers on Twitter for all access content, photos, videos, exclusive contests and promotions. And with the new Dodger Awards program, you can receive great prizes and experiences. To connect with the boys in blue, visit Dodgers.com slash connect. All right, Adrian grounds out. You got the picture? One away. Crawford 0 for 3 in the leadoff spot. Struck out twice, fly to center. 0 and 1. Tom Gorsolani growing up. Had attention deficit disorder. Took medical treatment in elementary school. Took Ritalin from the second grade into high school. I mean, he had to battle it. And as Tom said, the biggest single problem was just simply paying attention. Something always would catch my eye or my ear, and I'd start thinking about something else. Two and one. Foul ball. A few years ago, Adam LaRoche was Tom's teammate with Pittsburgh, and Adam suffers from ADD. Tom Gorsolani. And ball three. He's got Maldonado scrambling. Gorsolani came in without a record in his 13th game. Michael Gonzalez gets up now. We saw him last night. He was the losing pitcher. Time. One out, bottom of the seven, 4 3 Milwaukee.
And that's going to go right to Ricky Weeks. Soft line drive for the second out. A.J. Ellis hitting in the number two slot. Grounded to short, single to right to drive in a run and hit back to the box. Four runs, six hits, and one error for Milwaukee. Three runs, six hits, and one error for the Dodgers. And that's it to center, and here's Gonzalez. Boy, he is some player. No wonder they signed him to a, a new four year deal. At the end of seven, four three, Milwaukee. This is Saturday night with Milwaukee Sunday followed by three with the division leading Colorado Rockies. Then the Dodgers leave and go up to San Francisco for three and come right back and play Arizona Miami and Washington that carries through the 15th of May before they go back out on the road. Don Mattingly thought he had it right only to have Gomez hit that breaking ball of Matt Guerrier for a two run home run and turn it around on him. Don was talking about Hanley Ramirez before the game saying that we have to make sure he's ready. That's the main thing. Well Hanley began playing tonight and we'll give you an update. Meanwhile here is Betancourt. First ball swinging pops it up. Hairston. One away. Anyway, talking about Hanley, and Mattingly said he would have liked to have started here tonight with no rehab game. We're getting closer. Well, here's what he's done tonight, Rancho Cucamonga. He went one for two with a run batted in. He had a single, started the game at short, and turned in an unassisted double play. He plays with a splint on his finger. But apparently he can play with it. Ball one to Ricky Weeks. Ricky twice hit into force plays. Last time rounded to short. Four three in favor of Milwaukee. We're in the eighth inning. It's been McGill who went six and two thirds. Then Rodriguez. And now Guerrier. The bunt single by Rodriguez with two out set the stage for the home run. That's a strike. Two and one. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the eighth, they will have Ethier, Kemp, and Schumacher. Anybody gets on Hairston. 
J.P. Howell gets up the left hander in the Dodger bullpen. Two balls and two strikes. Ground ball up the middle by the diving Cruz and a base hit for Ricky Weeks who's now one for four. So Guerrero has given up two hits. And the catcher Martin Maldonado struck out twice fly to right. All of those at bats however were against McGill. Weeks over at first base is four for four in stolen bases. So you can bet they'll keep an eye on him. And ball one. I think Guerrero made that pitch with one eye on Weeks. Weeks stole 16 bases last year. It was high 25. Four runs, seven hits for Milwaukee, three runs, six hits for the Dodgers. Remember, before the Dodgers won last night, Milwaukee had beaten them nine of 11 and four straight at Dodger Stadium. And a drive to left, and that's got a lot of carry to it. It is gone. Well, back into the Dodger bullpen. Suddenly, it is six to three, and Matt Guerrero has served up two. Home runs to give Milwaukee a comfortable lead. The Maldonado hits one out. Well, Maldonado, his first home run of the year, he hit a fastball. It was a breaking ball hit by Carlos Gomez. And Mattingly now heading to the mound with Lolly, the left hand hitter, coming up. So it is six to three in favor of Milwaukee and the Dodgers in trouble as Guerrero falters and we'll be back. runs for the Brewers last year so he was a little hungry and he finally got a fastball to his liking and after striking out a couple of times tonight he hits the elusive home run to make it six to three Milwaukee and J.P. Howell working on Blake Lolly and it's a strike. So J.P. trying to get a couple of outs. The paid attendance 
a sizable crowd. Oh, and two. 50,224. 5 0 2 2 4. So the Dodgers lead momentarily. 3 2. Then it became 4 3, and now 6 3 Milwaukee. Chris Capuano talking to Matt McGill. Fouled off. Still 0 and 2. Capuano, you know, is on the DL with the strained calf, but he pitched earlier today from the mound. He can show you that right now. They said that his injury had zero effect on his throwing. If everything goes well, we're looking at a rehab start on Wednesday, either at Rancho or Albuquerque. They'll record the out on Lolly. That's the second out in the inning. And the batter will be Alex Gonzalez. So J.P. Howell picks up a K. Alex Gonzalez flied to center, struck out, grounded to third, 0 for 3. Alex hitting just 177. They miss Corey Hart. He's been out for quite a while. I'm not sure when he's going to come back. Little ground ball to Schumacher. But the damage is done. A single by Weeks and a home run by Maldonado. And at the end of seven and a half, six three Milwaukee. MLB.tv celebrating 11 years. Join the millions of fans and subscribe today. Watch every out-of-market game live online on your favorite mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.tv Premium. Visit MLB.tv today. Baseball everywhere. John Axford, who had been the closer, and as so often happens, closers lose the touch, and you can see that 9.35 ERA. That's enough to take the closer role away for you. So for now, Jim Henderson is the closer. Axford is the setup man. John is from Simcoe, Ontario, in Canada. He was originally signed by the Yankees. 6'5", 210. 30 years old. He's of Dutch heritage on his mom's side and his grandparents immigrated to Canada. Just after World War II. Ball one. 
Andre Eath here. Fly to center, grounded to short, fly to left. 0 4 3. That misses the corner. 2 0. Been looking at Axford's work against the Dodgers, and we've certainly seen him before. Ethier is 0 for 2 against him. Ramon Hernandez, the Dodger catcher, has two home runs against him. Talking about home runs, a towering drive to right field. She is gone. So Andre Ethier hits his third home run of the year. He got three pitches all at 95 miles an hour. And he hit the third one halfway up the pavilion in right field. For Axford, and this is one reason why he's not the closer. That is the fifth home run that he has allowed. And boy, Andre got all of that. Picturesque swing and a big home run. However, with the bases empty, so it is still six for Milwaukee, four for the Dodgers, and Matt Kemp takes his strike. So Ethia gets one back. Matt Kemp is two for three in the pass, no home runs against Axford. Little ground ball, Betancourt. So Kemp goes two for four as he grounds the third one away. You know the number three slot in your lineup is usually your best hitter. Number three. And Andre Ethier hitting in the number three slot tonight. The home run that he just hit that is the first home run from the number three spot in the lineup this year for Los Angeles. 23 games, they finally hit bingo. Schumacher with Hairston on deck. Skip is 1 for 3. Oh, and 2. One out, bottom of the eighth, one in. Six to four, Milwaukee. Peralta and now Axford. The Dodgers, McGill, Rodriguez, Guerrero, and Howell. Very high. Axford was chosen in the seventh round out of high school, but Seattle. But he decided to go to Notre Dame. And he pitched in the 2002 College World Series. As a sophomore. Little ground ball to short. Alex makes the play. And we have two down in the eighth inning. And Jerry Hairston coming up. Jerry Hairston started the game at first base. Finishing up at third. He double grounded out, flied out. His double came with two out, and the Dodgers left him. Six runs, eight hits for the Brewers, four runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. Strike. Oh, and one. Axford, among other problems, paid the bill as a professional pitcher. He had the Tommy John surgery after the 2004 season. Big breaking ball. Two and one to count.
Foul ball. Two balls and two strikes. Fifty thousand two hundred and twenty four dropped by tonight. Clayton Kershaw goes tomorrow against Kyle Loesch. Hope you be out here with us. And then the Rockies come in. Todd Helton, Troy Tulowitzki, Cargo. The first place Rockies. Just missed ball three. Ashford, we told you about how he had his arm operated on Tommy John. He's also had a lot of problems off the field. Not on the field, however. He was in, among other things, a 50 car pile up. He said food poisoning. His son was refused admission because he had passport problems. One thing after another. 6 4, Milwaukee. Devoted to home runs, home runs by Milwaukee Brewers. The first one by Gomez with a man aboard in the seventh inning. That was a breaking ball. And then the fastball, the Maldonado that winds up in the back of the Dodger bullpen. The two big bombs have turned it around on the Dodgers and they trail 6 4. Josh Wall will now be called in to pick up for Howell. And we'll see if there are other moves. I think Nick Punto is going to come into the game. So we'll be right back.
Nick Punto comes into the game with Josh Wall. So Punto would go in your rebase spot and bat eighth. And they could put Wall in Hairston spot. So Josh Wall will be facing Logan Schaefer. And we saw Logan last night sacrifice. Punto in on the grass. Big slow curveball for a strike. 0 and 1 to count to Logan Schaefer. Milwaukee trying to give the Dodgers a bad time. Logan's from San Jose and went to Cal Poly. One ball and one strike. Signed a Milwaukee contract out of Cal Poly. He's 26. One and one. And ball two, two and one. So Josh Wall trying to get some outs in the ninth inning out of Walker, Louisiana. He's big, 6'6, 220. Fastball, first right. Wall was going to go to LSU and the Dodgers signed him. Lance has been in the organization since 2005. Off the plate. The Josh goes all the way to Logan Schaefer, three and two. Grounded foul. When the Dodgers come up in the ninth inning, they are due to have Cruz, Punto, and then Adrian Gonzalez. Remember, he's batting ninth. Six runs, eight hits for the Brewers, four runs, seven hits, and one error for the Dodgers. Fastball, slow roll it is short. Cruz gloves, throws too late. Whoa. Logan Schaefer flying down the line. So Schaefer turns it into an infield leg single. Ball left the bat very slowly, a high bouncer. And he beats the play. So Schaefer, an infield single to short. Hit number one against Wall, and will bring up Aoki. Norichika Aoki has walked twice, bunt single, scored twice, and a strike. Aoki very much in a slump. Came into this game six hits in his last 44 at bats. So that knocked his average down to 265. And tonight he is one for two. Oh, and one. And did that get him on the foot? Just did avoid it. One ball and one strike. Dodgers with McGill, Rodriguez, Guerrier, Howell, and now Wall. Got a marvelous performance from Matt McGill who went six and two thirds and allowed just two runs. One ball and one strike. See how far apart Aoki's hands are. Watch when he grips the bat. First of all, he's choked up. So he, you figure he's looking bunt. And 
And got the bunt down. They'll have to hurry to get him. Bang, bang, play at first. Sometimes he'll grip the bat that way and then actually have that swinging bunt. That's a trademark. He runs out from his helmet every single at bat. Well, he knows how to bunt for sure. So now Schaefer is at second with one out. And Carlos Gomez coming up. Gomez struck out, single to right, single to short, and then hit a breaking ball of Matt Guerrier for a two run home run into the pavilion in left field. Hitting 342, an all around solid player. Foul ball. When they get a Ramos Ramirez back, and I don't know how long it'll take before they get Corey Hart back. Milwaukee then will be as good as their pitching because they'll score some runs. Milwaukee six runs nine hits Dodgers four runs seven hits. Fastball in there. So Josh Wall in some trouble, trying not to give up an additional run. Carlos Gomez, 27 years old, he'd be 28 in December. One and two. Breaking ball, slap foul. One and two the count. Fastball, curveball, slider and a change. That last was a slider. Fastball. And Josh had that fastball up to 94. Gomez with his home run tonight. He had 19 for the Brewers last year. That was a breakout season for him. Two and two. Long night for any catcher when you have five pitchers. Two balls and two strikes. Chased a bad ball. So two out. Holding at second base is Shaver. And now Ryan Braun coming up. Ryan Braun out to deep center. A nice catch. A running catch by Matt Kemp. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third inning. Fly to right and walk. That field is choice and they're going to walk him intentionally. He hit a comebacker to Matt McGill. Whoa. Almost threw it away. And McGill turned to throw to second and both Cruz and Schumacher were very close. Schumacher a little behind the bag. And the throw went to Schumacher and he tried to get his foot on the bag but couldn't do it. And that led to two runs. 
So the Dodgers remember last night. Overcame their own weakness. Committed four errors. No error on that play but two runs and that's the difference in the game. So in a moment. We will have Uneski Betancourt. Betancourt single of the hole at short great play by Cruz. He kept the ball on the infield otherwise Betancourt gets a run batted in. He singled a drive in a run in the third flied to right and popped up. Two for four hitting 290. There's two out here in the top of the ninth six four Milwaukee. And ball one. Josh Wall trying to get some outs here in the ninth. Two on. Schaefer and Braun. Ground ball to third. Punto on the bag and that's that. All right. Here come the Dodgers. Bottom of the ninth inning. They are due to send up Cruz, Punto, and Gonzalez. And we'll be back. And Martin Maldonado each hit a home run with a man aboard. That accounted for a big four of the six. Matt Kemp, two for four with a stolen base, picked up a run. Matt McGill rushed in the breach when Stephen Fife could not pitch. McGill was a very pleasant surprise when six and two thirds allowed two earned runs, struck out seven, and really from the third inning on, he was very much in control. He allowed just one hit from the third into the seventh. However, the Dodgers down by two, and they'll look at the closer now for Milwaukee, and that's big Jim Henderson. He's 6'5 and about 190 from Calgary in Alberta, Canada. Went to Tennessee Wesleyan and was originally signed by the Expos back in 2003. He played for Team Canada in the World Cup in 2009, and he is certainly someone who paid his dues. He was finally called up to the majors after 10 years in the minor leagues. He struck out the first batter he faced, and he hurled a perfect inning in his big league debut in July of last year. So. Luis Cruz will start it off against him. Foul back. 0 and 1. Luis Cruz tonight flied to right, flied to left, rounded out, made a big play to save a run way back in the first inning. 
0-1. Fastball popped up. Lolly, the first baseman, is there, and we have one out. So Henderson, just like Ashford, coming in throwing hard. One down. Punto just getting into the game. If you had any doubts what kind of a pitcher Henderson is, he saw him make three pitches and they were all 95. He also has a slider and a changeup. Got rid of his windup last year. Ball one. Punto limited service hitting 346. Two and oh. Maldonado talking. Henderson paid the price. Not only 10 years in the minor leagues. About four years ago. He had a herniated disc in his back. He also had a shoulder that would require surgery. But he just kept sticking with it. And here he is. Fastball in there. That was 94. Carl Crawford has to get somebody on for him to get up to the plate. Mark McGuire talking briefly to him. Right. So Punto in trouble now against Henderson. Two and two the count. Waiting on deck, Adrian Gonzalez. Henderson's earned run average is less than one. Out of the way. Henderson is in his 13th game. Two balls and two strikes. One out in the ninth, six for Milwaukee. Three and two to Nick. Puto about five nine, so he's not going to give you a big strike zone. So of course now you can read the minds of the crowd. Punto gets on. Adrian Gonzalez hits a home run and the game is tied. I think that's what they're thinking. Henderson, if you are thinking that way, has not given up a home run. Duck in a score and the Diamondbacks defeated the Rockies in 10 innings, three to two. Arizona's perfect in extra inning games. They are six and old. Oh. And ball one. Meanwhile, the Giants led the Padres 5 0. San Diego went ahead 6 5, getting five unearned runs against Barry Zito in that game. Is now in the 10th inning. One ball and no strikes to Adrian. Two home runs, 17 runs batted in. Breaking ball missed. Matt Kemp chewing on a nail behind Don Mattingly. AJ Ellis. On the steps. Two and zero, oh, the count. To Adrian Gonzalez. And a high 
fly ball, but that's all it is. And here comes Carlos Gomez. Bill Gonzalez gets a 2 0 green light and pops it up. And the batter now is Carl Crawford. Dodgers scored tonight at one in the third, one in the fourth, one in the sixth, one in the seventh. The Brewers did it the other way with two in the third, two in the seventh, two in the eighth. Don't forget Loesch and Kershaw tomorrow. Hope you'll be out in the ballpark with us. Puto goes, but that's defensive indifference. No stolen base. Crawford 0 for 4, struck out twice, fly to center, lined out to Ricky Weeks. <laughs> 0 and 2. Crawford had a lot of trouble, so did everybody else, with Willie Peralta. And especially Peralta's breaking ball that was down below the knees. Struck him out twice with that pitch. So we'll see how Henderson handles him. No balls, two strikes. Oh, and two. Just off the plate. One and two. Peralta, Axford, and Henderson. The Dodgers, McGill, Rodriguez, Guerrero, Howell, and Wall. Slice foul over the head of third base umpire Angel Hernandez. Right there, Angel alert got out of the way. You know the Dodgers were runners in scoring position, and now we're dusting this off because last night we were talking about the fact they had perked up. They are one for nine with runners in scoring position, and that was AJ Ellis had the two out hit to drive in a run, and that's it. So here they are with Punto. At second base, two out, and one and two to Carl Crawford. 6 4, Milwaukee. He wouldn't bite, no swing. But they're pitching him down there because that's the way for all the pitching. So the deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, a runner at second, and the Brewers lead by two. Slaps a ground ball to third. It's kicked at third. Everybody's safe, and the Dodgers have runners at the corners. Bettencourt had it get away on what would have been the last out. And so A.J. Ellis has a shot, and Crawford is safely aboard, and what we assume is an error. Ground ball right off the glove. So the Dodgers still have a shot. First and third, two out. Six to four in favor of Milwaukee. And here's A.J. Ellis. A.J. tonight grounded to short. He has the one base hit with a runner in scoring position. He's back to the box. The last out that A.J. made was a Nice running catch by Carlos Gomez. Six runs, nine hits, and two errors. 
Well, Milwaukee, four runs, seven hits, one error for the Dodgers. And ball one. So Henderson got Cruz to pop up, walk Punto. Got Gonzalez on a pop fly, only to have Bettencourt kick the ground ball by Crawford. Ron Renicky sweating out the last out. One and one to AJ. Ellis hitting 281. There's a home run. Eight runs batted in. One and one. Crawford, of course, representing the time run. So if nothing else, Henderson wants to take a step away from him. One and one. There he goes. And the pitch inside, and Crawford steals second. There was no defensive indifference. He represents a tying run. So now the Dodgers second and third with two out. Down by two with runners in scoring position. Fastball. Throwing hard enough. That was 96. Second and third, two out in the ninth. Dodgers down by two. Breaking ball hit to the left of short. Nice pick by Gonzalez to get him. So Alex Gonzalez had a difficult play. He had to go 360 and get it over the first on a bounce. And the Dodgers leave the tying runs at second and third. For Milwaukee, six runs, nine hits, and two errors. The winning pitcher, Willie Peralta. Four runs, seven hits, an error for the Dodgers. The loser, Matt Guerrier, and Henderson picked up his save. Don't forget tomorrow, Loesch and Kershaw. Stay tuned for Dodgers Live coming up next. Good night, everybody.